Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. Dr. Peter Diamandis has a strong interest in longevity and is the founder of the XPRIZE Foundation. The most recent competition from the foundation is the Healthspan Prize with a goal of revolutionizing the way we approach human aging. At 62, he is about the same age as me. Dr. Diamandis says he is prioritizing his health span and maintaining optimal health for the next decade. CelebrityNetWorth.com says that his net worth is 200 million. This may mean that he uses interventions that are out of our range. However, it also means he can afford the best advice, so I think it's worth looking at what he chooses to support his health. He periodically publishes a PDF with his protocol, which is freely available from his website and linked to in the description. Today, I will go through the supplement regimen from the latest version from fall 2023. Dr. Diamandis includes this disclaimer specifically in the supplement section of the PDF. So I think it needs to be included here too. First, a quote from Ray Kurzweil, a futurist that Dr. Diamandis puts at the beginning of the supplement section. It's likely that we are just another 10 or 12 years away from a point where the general public will hit longevity escape velocity. Where longevity escape velocity is the time at which science is extending life by one year for every year elapsed. As Dr. Diamandis puts it, he wants to keep himself in great health to be able to intercept the breakthroughs which are coming so this is certainly optimistic, but Ray Kurzweil has been pretty good with his predictions in the past. Let's have a look at the specific interventions that Dr. Diamandis follows. First, lowering cholesterol. Although there are differing opinions on the role of cholesterol in heart disease, people such as Dr. Peter Atia in his book Outlab consider ApoB to be a strong marker for CVD risk, and he recommends his patients to have it as low as possible. Dr. Diamandis also has a genetic predisposition to cardiovascular disease, so he is trying to keep his ApoB down. For this, he is taking three prescription drugs. I will write prescription drugs or treatments in brown to separate them from supplements which I will leave in black. Crestor is a statin which inhibits cholesterol production by blocking the mevalonate pathway. We discuss some of the possible side effects of statins with Dr. Barry Tan, which is linked to above. Dr. Diamandis also takes a PCSK9 inhibitor. PCSK9 is an enzyme which degrades the LDL receptor, which in turn pulls LDL particles out of the blood. By inhibiting PCSK9, the receptors remain active for longer and pull further LDL from the blood and so lower plasma cholesterol. And finally, Zetia blocks the absorption of cholesterol in the gut. Rapamycin has been shown to extend lifespan in animal models and is also approved for other uses in humans by the FDA and so can be taken off label. It has the most robust preclinical data for extending lifespan of any small molecule. In this document, Dr. Diamandis does not mention the dosing regimen, but in an earlier version of the document, he says six milligrams one day per week. Dr. Diamandis also takes some peptides. He does not give details of these except to name CJC ipamorelin. A certain class of peptide known as a secretagogue can be a way of increasing hormones by stimulating the glands to produce them rather than just adding the hormones directly, which can lead to a sudden flood. So ipamorelin is this type of a peptide for human growth hormone. Dr. Diamandis has a busy schedule, including cross time zone travel, and uses certain nootropics such as modafinil to help with his cognition. I would not count this as a longevity supplement as such, but he does mention it in the PDF, so I have included it here. Skin care is important as skin is subject to many external threats, the biggest of which is UVB light, although other toxins can also play a role. The skin is also our largest organ, and inflammation from the skin can affect the level of systemic chronic inflammation. Dr. Diamandis uses one skin because of its focus on senescent cells. We just spoke with Dr. Hayes, the CEO of One Skin, where you can find more details on how the serum works to suppress senescent cells and to reduce systemic inflammation. He also uses sunblock to keep down the amount of UVB incurred damage in his skin. For his daily supplement regimen, Dr. Diamandis takes creatine, 
which improves exercise, collagen production, and may help with cognitive performance as well. Alpha-lipoic acid is an anti-inflammatory and antioxidant. Selenomethionine is a source of selenium, which is an important trace element, especially for the immune system. Lion's mane is anti-inflammatory, which may help the brain and heart health. Vitamin D and K2 are important for many functions, particularly bone health. Dr. Diamandis separates out boosting NAD into its own category. Boosting NAD has shown a number of potential benefits in preclinical models where it reduces senescent cells, supports DNA repair, and helps mitochondrial health. Although the clinical data is less clear, it has shown benefits such as improving insulin sensitivity and aerobic performance. Dr. Diamandis does not give doses, but he does take both NMN and NR, as well as Time Plus from Nuchido. Nuchido take a different approach than the other two in boosting NAD levels. It activates the salvage pathway to make NAD internally rather than boosting it with precursors. You can reference our talk with Dr. Nicola Conlon, the CEO of Nuchido, linked to above for more details on how this works and why she chose this strategy. For these three therapies at the leading edge of longevity, Dr. Diamandis does not provide any details on his regimen, only that he is exploring them. So a quick review of what they are. Senescent cells are cells which should have died but remain active. They no longer perform their proper function, but instead produce inflammatory secretions, which cause both local and systemic inflammation. They form naturally, but when we're young, our immune system clears them out. However, with age, they accumulate. Removing them has shown benefits in preclinical trials, in aging and ill animals, and human trials are now ongoing. There are supplements called senolytics, such as fisetin, questin, disapnib, which remove senescent cells, but the efficacy and whether there are off-target effects is still under investigation. You can find more on senescent cells in our talks with Dr. James Kirtland and Dr. Judith Campisi. Exosomes are vesicles which are excreted by cells for cell-to-cell -cell communication. Some experiments have shown that youthful exosomes can have a rejuvenating impact both locally and systemically when injected or used topically. For example, see our talk with Dr. Duncan Ross. At the moment, I am not aware of any FDA approved treatment for them, although there are some that are currently in trial. And therapeutic plasma exchange is an FDA approved therapy for many autoimmune diseases. It is the process of filtering out the existing plasma from the blood, which is then replaced with fresh neutral plasma and albumin. In cases of autoimmunity, for example, the blood may contain inflammatory factors and elements from the immune system which are attacking the body. These are removed with the old plasma. In a similar way, there is thought to be aging factors in the blood which this process removes. For more details, you can refer to our video where we spoke with Dr. Dobri Kiprov, a doctor who offers TPE services. Stem cells can both self-renew and become other cell types, so have immense potential for regenerative medicine in the future. However, stem cells from other parties will normally be rejected by the body and so have limited efficacy. There are a couple of solutions that Dr. Diamandis is exploring for this. The first is to bank his own stem cells. These can be stored in deep freeze so that they, can, they don't age and potentially can be reawakened for future therapies. As they are his own, the rejection issue will not be there. The other path is to find stem cells which can be engineered to not be rejected. And he mentioned cellularity, where he sits on the board as a company looking at technology for this. As mentioned before, Dr. Diamandis uses peptides. A peptide is just a small protein made of amino acids and a class of intervention, and so has many possible functions. He specifically mentions a couple, BPC-157, and we already mentioned CJC ipamorelin. BPC-157 is mostly beneficial in wound healing. We talked with Dr. Elizabeth Yerth about peptides, including BPC-157, which she uses in her clinic, and this is linked to above. It should be noted that research on peptides is generally quite early, and Dr. Diamandis points out that staying up to date is very important. 
I think it's interesting to see the leading edge therapies like TPE and exosomes that Dr. Diamandis is following. And these are areas that I too am watching very closely. I hope you found this interesting. Thank you for your attention and I wish you all well. <laughs>